Hello and welcome back to Dave's American Flyer Trains for the reassembly and final testing of a 762-42 remote control track right hand switch uh, that has been rebuilt. All the components shown here were washed and that of course is with the exception of the paper tape that goes over the lens to produce the red and green color in the uh, signal block. Uh, this is one I'll repurpose that came off of a previous uh, controller and this one is a brand new piece of tape. Most of the components here were polished. The focus, of course, was on the track section itself, the platform and the track section, and all of these contact points. You'll notice that these are in much better condition than what was previously shown. Of course, the plunger was polished as well, as well as the contact springs that are on the arm or mechanism uh, that drives the plunger in and out, or I should say that's connected to the plunger that goes inside the solenoid coil. Most everything else was just gently wiped with alcohol, and of course these terminal nuts were also polished. Nothing was needed uh, for the top of the block, signal block. This is a good time to check all the wiring beneath the controller, or excuse me, the track section, uh, to make sure that there are strong connections at all solder points and of course to clean these contact points. These are the two contacts right here that touch the bottom of the frog. So if you have a frog that is concave and it is not screwed down tightly right here, which is the screw is of course mounted on the other side, I think there's a possibility that there could be some contact problems. These are almost impossible to reach. They're right there beneath the frog. You might be able to see them reflecting right there. Now I usually, if I'm going to get to them, what I'll do is I'll remove the screw and run sandpaper underneath and move it back and forth, flipping it over and doing it on the other side and then blowing it out uh, with compressed air and then uh, spraying a little contact cleaner. Just be careful with the contact cleaner because plastic is not compatible with contact cleaner and it could discolor it. So I usually just spray it directly underneath. The rest of the contact points go to the track sections, and I've verified that each one was strong. However, uh, I have found some that were disconnected uh, for whatever reason, uh, and they're a little bit tricky to connect because you can see AC Gilbert has pulled these wire sections about as taut uh, as they can be pulled, and, and these, of course, are pretty easy to reattach. These could be abused a little bit. I've had these subjected to rust, these going directly to the solenoid coal, subjected to rust as well as other corrosion. And as I mentioned earlier, there's been times when I could not get the terminal nuts off the post and I had to redirect that section of the wiring. So this one is ready to be reassembled and closed up. The railhead was polished as well as the terminal post and the Exterior part that rests on top of the solenoid was cleaned to make sure that there is freedom of movement but not overly free such that you're aiding in the movement of the frog because this is going to be attached to the frog uh, from that arm that goes from the solenoid's um, piston or plunger uh, but it, you don't want it hanging up and snagging so I cleaned that thoroughly. Now of course most importantly to me was the cleaning of the interior of the solenoid to match the cleanliness of the plunger itself. So I did a thorough job, I hope, of cleaning the interior part uh, of the solenoid. So now it is ready for reassembly. We're ready for what is probably the most challenging part of this reassembly, and that is putting the plunger in the solenoid and then reconnected it right here on this slot. You just want to make sure that it's at 90 degrees and not like this. So only one of these posts is going to go into this slot and you are going to have to bend this a little bit to get it to fit. I usually extend it all the way out, put a little bit of pressure on it, to bend it into place, and there it is. Now it's reconnected right there, so you're ready to go. At this point, we can turn it over.
reinsert down in its opening. And at this point, I'm going to off camera simply attach the framework and the base uh, for the solenoid uh, wrap, wire wrap first, so that then we can go back and work on the arm that makes the connection. Now that the base of the solenoid substructure and the signal block substructure is in place, we can start working with really the only the second thing that provides a minor challenge to uh, reassembly, and that is putting in the spring and the throw that holds it. And we can go back over here now and check for movement, freedom of movement, and let's go ahead and reattach this arm to the frog right here, and I'll do that off camera. The screw that goes from the arm to the frog was reattached. So now we can check for total movement. And of course that lets you know where the colors go uh, on these posts right here that hold the, the filters or lens uh, for coloration in the signal block. This is red, always goes on the outside nearest the post and green on the interior for the main line. So hopefully that's freedom of movement, but not so much so that the train can move it, but we'll see. And the next step uh, is the one that sometimes you wish you had three hands, and that's placing the spring here, the throw there, and then capping it with this small plate. I'll do that offline. The plate that holds the throw and the spring has been reapplied. This one was pretty easy to do, and it's just that sometimes the spring will push that throw out a little bit as you're trying to put the plate on, so it can get a little bit uh, frustrating, but uh, just keep working with it and it'll go back on. And, and then, of course, I want to verify movement by exercising the frog. So your contact points are matching. You can see how much better they look, polished. Again, the only place that I put lubrication on the bottom of these sometimes is on the point of that throw if it has a severe, severe amount of drag. Just be careful because you don't want too much freedom of movement, but you want the solenoid to be able to move this, but not the train. So we're going to go flip it over, and let's finish the top before we put the cover plates back on the bottom. To one side of the block mechanism, I applied a repurposed piece of red and green filter paper uh, that's used to cast the colors through the lens. Now that one was repurposed, and on this side, I'm going to apply a new one that I obtained from Portline's Hobby. And if I'm not mistaken, the backing just peels off on this one and it sticks on. I'll do that off camera. I peeled off the back of that lens paper, color paper, and it had adhesive, and I put it on this post, uh, matching the red here with the red being out on the siding and the green for the main line. Now let's put the bulb in. I have coated the inside of the bulb base with CRC-226, a very light coating, uh, just to protect the bulb and provide better connectivity. Bulb's been reinstalled, and again, I use 24-watt bulbs. I recommend them for these switches due to the mechanical movement and the fact that it's going to take a jolt of 18 volts because this is on constant power. And I found, it's been my experience, that these last much, much, much longer uh, than a 14 or 18 volt bulb. Following the bulb installation, I made sure that the paper, the lens paper, is not touching the bulb. And it should be ready for the next step. I've gone ahead and put the uh, nuts back on the post. And I think we're now ready to close up the backing and then give it a test. Before that, I will probably, if it'll take, I'll probably write in pencil here the rebuild date. And hopefully that the customer will be satisfied with or my colleague will be satisfied and be proud to put this on a layout and find it acceptable. And I hope it'll last another 50 years. I put my signature on the bottom. It was rebuilt January of 2020 in pencil. And maybe, you know, January 2050, 60, 70, 80, somebody will open this up and say, hey, let's rebuild it for another 50 years. So 63 years from the time someone else did this to I did it. And let's close it up and test it. 
For final testing, I've dimmed the lights in my shop. Keep in mind that this is a 24 watt bulb here. I'm using a transformer on my bench that is only 16 volts rather than the common 18 volts. So this may appear to be just a little bit weaker, but we're just gonna test for movement and for illumination. You can see the frog and then the signal block changing colors. Really good crisp movement of the frog. Everything illuminates. Now I'm only testing one side. Uh, recall that as you test these sides individually, if you test them individually, make sure that the other rainbow wire is completely separated and they're not touching one another. The only step left to perform is I am gonna coat this base on CRC 226 as I did the controller cover. And that's gonna be it. Uh, this should be, I think, a switch and a controller that uh, might last another 50 years and be enjoyed uh, by my colleague on his layout. Thanks again for watching Dave's American Flyer Trains. So long, everyone.